I was in the fourth grade and I'm in the bathroom and I reach into my pants and I pull out the piece of paper and pencil that I had just snuck into the bathroom with me. I press the paper up against the wall and I start writing a love note to a certain special someone in my class. And so I go back into the classroom after I just wrote this note, wipe the sweat off my forehead. I'm nervous as fuck because I had this grand plan that I was going to slip this girl the note at the end of the day. The end of the school day comes around, I'm shitting bricks. <laughs> but I build up the courage to go over to her and tell her that I have something for her. <laughs> so I give her the note and I don't even stay to watch her open it. No, I walk the fuck away and I get out of there as quick as possible because I'm so embarrassed and nervous. The next day, my teacher pulls me aside and calls me into the other room. She pulls out this same note and says, Matt, what do you know about this note? My face goes bright red. I'm like, oh no. Like, let me tell you, it was awkward as shit. I was a little fourth grader. Oh, that's so cute, Matt, right? Like a little fourth grader I'm writing this love note. But I was so embarrassed and I don't even remember what I said to her. I probably tried to lie about it. And get this, the funniest part about this story is that probably a couple days later, the teacher wanted to meet with my parents. So I had to go through this whole process again with my parents in the room all over a damn love note. This just shows that that girl probably got scared, probably got creeped out by me and gave the teacher the note and tattletailed on me all over a damn note. I recently talked to my mom about this and she said it was the stupidest fucking meeting ever. She was like, why the hell would the teacher bring us in over you writing a note? It made no sense. And I'm like, yeah, mom, I, I agree. Thank you. <laughs> but anyway, bro, I tell this story because it just shows you that even back in the fourth grade, I was a nice guy, a stereotypical beta simp for lack of a better term. And you may be like, wow, that's so cute, Matt. Like, oh, you just passed her a little love note. That's so cute of you. Well, yes, okay, it is pretty funny. It's cute. I'm a little fourth grader passing a note, a love note. But at the same time, it just shows that we were not taught how to actually pursue girls the right way, how to actually attract them, how to not be such a nice guy. And when I say nice guy, I mean the stereotypical simp. The guy who gets no ass, but tries his hardest and never succeeds. That used to be me. And the funny thing is, even back then, I was like, I thought I was in love with the girl. This is a problem with a lot of men today. They fall in love too quickly. And I'm gonna be honest with you, it's false love. This happened to me so many times. This may happen to you too, where you're in class and you're daydreaming about a girl you've never even spoken to. Your crush, right? I used to do this in high school. I'd be daydreaming about the girl who I had a crush on, never said a word to her. Meanwhile, while the teacher's trying to teach us things, no, I'm not even listening to that, fuck that. I'm daydreaming about this girl and about our future together, thinking that we're gonna magically fall in love like some fairy princess tale. Us men have to be better, but it's not your fault and it wasn't my fault either. That's the way it goes and that's how we were literally programmed as young kids to believe like in this fairy princess magical love Disney movie bullshit. I didn't know any better. And you know what? This continued throughout high school, into my college years, into my adult years. I was still a nice guy. Maybe you just heard that story and you thought, oh, that sounds normal, Matt. I daydream about my crush too and I want to marry her and be with her forever. Not normal, bro. You never even talked to her. It's pathetic. I wish someone would have told me this when I was younger. It's fucking pathetic. I'm going to explain to you how to kill that inner nice guy at the end of this video. And by the way, it's not some toxic bullshit. No, it's actually a healthy way to like literally navigate relationships and pursue women the right way without being that needy, toxic, nice guy. Let me give you a couple characteristics of a nice guy. The first one, it's actually fucking hilarious, is that you're scared to disagree with girls. Think about this, my very first girlfriend ever. I stumbled into her in high school. I had no game. My game was let me be friends with her and see if it works out. And it, it worked out for a little bit, but I remember this so vividly. We were talking about horror movies and I say to her, yeah, I don't really like horror movies. But then she says, oh, how come? I really like horror movies. And my pussy ass says to her, oh, oh uh, actually, no, I, it's only some of them, but I do like a lot of them. When in reality, no, I didn't fucking like horror movies. I didn't want to watch horror movies, but I was scared to disagree with her, thinking that if I agree with everything she says, she will like me more for it. But in reality, it just showed that I had no backbone. It showed that I was a pussy. Oh, actually, no, I do like those horror movies. We can watch them all the time together. I want to go back in time and slap younger Matt across the face and be like, bro, you're lying to her. Think about that. You're literally a liar. Nice guys and simps are literally liars because instead of staying true to their own values and just being like, nah, I don't fuck with horror movies. I don't want to watch them. My tail was between my legs and I said, oh yeah, actually, no, I do like them. Crazy, man, crazy. The other characteristic of a nice guy is what I just described of basically trying to be friends with the girl. Thinking that if you agree with everything she says and you talk to her like she's your friend, that she will magically want to fuck you. Let me tell you right now, being friends with a girl is not the recipe for success. You know what that does? It makes her want to be friends with you. She'll like you, but as a friend, not as a lover. That is not how you polarize a woman. That is how you just become friends with her. Treat her like a friend, watch what happens. Treat her like a lover. Treat her like someone you actually want to have sex with. Like you're actually attracted to her. Show her those intentions and you'll actually have success with her for once. Unless she just doesn't like you, but we'll get to that. Ah, one of my favorites of the stereotypical nice guy. 
is a guy who sits on Snapchat all day and has these long ass Snapchat streaks with girls. I was so guilty of this back in high school. I would literally get a girl's Snapchat through maybe a friend or I'd quick add her or whatever it is and I'd send a snap. Wouldn't, no words would be said. Just send a selfie and she'd send one back. I'd send one back, 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 back and forth. For days, for months. And have these streaks with girls who I'd never even talked to in real life. I would just be sending Snapchat streaks to them. Thinking that maybe one day I would have a chance with her. Maybe one day I'd be able to get in her pants. And actually, I want to tell you a story of the first kind of experience I had with female nature. For lack of a better term. I liked this girl a lot. And I was Snapchatting her constantly. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. At the same time, there was a girl who liked me a lot and she was Snapchatting me. But I didn't give a fuck about that girl. I cared about this other girl who I really liked. I had a crush on her. I was so happy when she would Snapchat me back. And then I'd see this other girl Snapchat me and I'm like, ugh, why is she Snapchatting me? And I'd sometimes respond, sometimes not. But then she'd double snap me because she was like, what the fuck, this guy doesn't care about me? Why? He's different from other people. All the other guys in my inbox are Snapchatting me constantly. And I had no idea about this when I was younger. But think about it. This girl was trying to lock me down. I was trying to lock this girl down, but this girl didn't give a fuck about me because I was too overly needy and showed that I was just a pussy and just wanted to basically just get in her pants. While this girl, she was pursuing the other guy who didn't give a fuck about her. This sounds toxic, but it's the truth. While at the same time, this girl who was pursuing me, she had other guys pursuing her that she didn't give a fuck about. It's interesting, right? We as humans, we want what we can't have. And it's so funny because this girl right here, I could have probably built a nice relationship with her, but I was too focused on the other girl who didn't give a fuck about me. That's another lesson. Choose a girl who chooses you. I was too blind to see this. And it's so funny. I'm looking back now like, fuck man, I had a chance with this one. She really wanted me. But it's so interesting that she really wanted me. Like you may be like, why would she want you? You didn't even care about her. Exactly. I didn't care about the outcome. I wasn't trying so hard to get her. She was trying to lock me down. That's the whole fucking point. It's the whole idea. And then we've already touched on this, but the last kind of characteristic that I came up with was a guy who falls in love too easily. He's too emotionally attached, too quickly. He daydreams about her after one date, daydreams about them getting married, daydreams about them falling in love and living happily ever after. You have to put your feelings to the side at some points, otherwise you will get burned. And I'm not saying you can't love a woman. Of course, I love a woman right now, my girl that I'm with. But when you fucking show your cards so early and you just show that you're just a needy little boy, you'll never win. And that is why you must kill the inner nice guy. So let me explain how exactly I was able to kill that inner nice guy. So all those characteristics of a nice guy, I embodied those growing up. I ended up getting into a relationship with like four girls, but I was the nice guy. I was the guy who brought the feminine energy to the relationship and I depolarized every single one of those relationships, causing her to lose interest in me, causing her to lose attraction for me. Because I thought if I just be friends with her, if I just agree with everything she says, she'll like me and love me forever. It's not how it works. That's not how attraction works. You have to keep the polarity between the two of you, which is attraction. Masculine energy, feminine energy. What I did is I brought the feminine energy so then she had to like meet me in the middle and we're depolarized now. There's no attraction anymore. She would leave me and I got friend zoned four fucking times. So I said, you know what? I'm tired of losing this game. Because honestly, you can think about it like a game. It is a fucking game. You don't want to play it? Get the fuck out of here. To me, I was like, you know what? I like games and I like winning. So I said, I'm gonna win this fucking game. You and me, we are men, right? We should like playing games. We should like competing. We should like winning. So let me just fuck off real quick and just explain to you how to actually win the game, okay? And like I said, it's not toxic. I'm gonna explain the healthy way. And here's what it is. You start with yourself. I started with me. I had to get right within. My mental health was shit and it showed through my relationships. The fact that I loved this girl when I didn't even love myself, it's false love. When you don't even love yourself, how can you love another person? I was projecting my unhappiness onto this other girl to the point where she made me whole and that's the wrong fucking way to look at it. Oh, my better half. No, bro. No, you need to be whole first. And I finally realized this. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go all in on improving my mental health and I finally like discovered NoFap. So I went on semen retention. The three most powerful things that helped me were semen retention, working out and meditation. I built up more confidence. Through semen retention, I was able to desexualize and rewire my brain to the point where I was no longer putting girls on pedestals. I no longer saw them as something that is better than me. I was no longer afraid of girls thinking that they were some fucking magical creature that I couldn't get. No, I desexualized my brain and was able to become happy within. I cannot stress this enough. When you love yourself fully, you stop being a nice guy little simp because you now carry yourself with a different energy. You stop caring so much. Back in the day, I would care so much about girls. That's all I would think about. And the results I got were Nothing. I stumbled into a couple relationships that sucked. They were horrible. But when I finally fixed my own shitty mental health through semen retention, meditation, and working out, built up a better body, became more attractive. Now I know my worth. 
I had to literally stop caring about girls. You need to just stop caring so much. Why do you care so much about girls that don't even fucking like you? Okay, just stop. Focus entirely on yourself. We all, as men, need to go through a period where we just focus entirely on ourselves, on bettering ourselves, building ourselves up to actually be attractive, building ourselves up to actually be someone a girl wants to have sex with, straight up. We all try so hard to get the girl when we never actually do any inner work. We never actually build ourselves up first. We have it backwards. Men have it backwards. We think, oh, we can just get the girl and then she'll make us whole and then we can work on ourselves. That never fucking happens. You have to make yourself whole first. You have to build yourself up and work on yourself first before you can get the girl. Or you'll end up like me, attracting girls who aren't even good for you, attracting girls who have also have shitty mental health and then the relationship sucks and then you depolarize it because you don't know anything about being a strong masculine man because you never actually built yourself up to be one and you've never worked out, never done semen retention, you don't know what it fucking takes to be disciplined so then the relationship just fucking ends because you're depolarized. Here's the thing, bro. It's a journey. Fixing your mental health takes time. This is why all my videos on my channel are directed towards young men trying to help them fix their mental health, trying to help them fix their physical health, everything. Trying to improve their lives. Get on NoFap, semen retention. It's a journey. But when you go all in on yourself, when you literally just think to yourself, all right, I don't need a girl. Right now, it's a period of focusing on myself because I'm not good enough for a girl yet. I'm not good enough to balance that. I don't even love myself yet, but once you do, now you go back into the dating market. Now you re-enter with a newfound confidence, with a newfound energy, with this energy of, you know what? I know I'm the shit. I don't need a girl. So that means your nice guy, simpy ways are done with. I re-entered the dating market after building myself up. Like I say re-enter, but I literally was just living my life. I didn't actually want a girl. At the time, I didn't even want a girl, but my girlfriend stumbled into my life. We met and we hit it off and the rest is history. But the point is, I was not a simp for her. I was not needy for her because I knew what I brought to the table. I knew I was happy with myself at the end of the day. So it was like I had the pick of the litter, so to speak, instead of back in the day, right? Where we're all like, oh, I need to get that girl. Like any girl that shows us a sliver of attention, we're all over it. We daydream about having babies with her because we don't actually love ourselves yet. But when you fucking love yourself, build yourself up, you're mentally stable. <laughs> like straight up, you're mentally happy. You stop caring so much and that is attractive. Girls want you to be the rock. They don't want you to be the needy ones. They want to be the needy ones. Cause that's how our energies are supposed to be. Masculine, feminine. When we bring this feminine needy boy energy to relationships, girls are repulsed. Their pussies dry up. I hope you understand what I'm saying. My younger self needed this fucking video. Like years before I learned about this shit. So I hope this helps at least one person out there. It might save you a few failed relationships just by knowing that, bro, get yourself right first. Stop caring so much about girls. I get it. We want to have sex. We want to be with girls. We want to be in a loving, healthy relationship. I did too. But when I just fucking decided, you know what? If I keep playing the game like this, I'm going to keep losing. So I need to take a step back, work on myself first, love myself first, then go back at it. It kind of sucks. But hey, like I said, I like winning games. I don't like playing games to lose. Right now, you might be playing the losing game like I was back in the day. There's a lot of men who just will give up and say, well, the girl should like me for who I am. Why do I need to improve myself? I just want to be this nice guy, date a little simp and see if I can attract her. Yeah, good luck. It's a losing fucking battle. And you know what? I love being a stronger version of myself because my relationship is so much better this way. By the way, I am nice to my girlfriend. I am nice. I'm a nice guy. If you met me in person, you'd be like, yeah, Matt's a nice guy. But the nice guy simp is not the same as being just a nice dude in a relationship who can like, I can treat my girlfriend obviously very nice and I'm still polarized. We're still polarized because I don't treat her like a friend, right? I treat her like a lover. I don't put her on a pedestal. Like, no, we're equal. We're partners in a sense. And when I met her, I didn't give off needy energy. I gave off the energy of, I'm so happy with my life that I don't even care if you like me back or not. When you have that energy, when you speak to a girl and you don't give a fuck if she even likes you or not, she can tell, bro. She can tell that you are content with your own life, that you're on a mission, that you're smashing your goals. You know how attractive that is to a woman? Being disciplined, being driven. You don't need fucking money, bro. You don't need money. We're all young men. We don't need to be fucking billionaires, millionaires. We don't even need to be making six figures. We just need to be driven. We need to be motivated. We need to be going somewhere and pursuing something. We need to be building and care more about that than her. And she will love you for it. With that said, I may need to make more videos on this topic because young men need help with the dating game. Dating isn't easy. It's fucking hard. And none of us were taught properly unless you had a masculine father figure who was with a feminine woman. My parents were divorced, so I didn't see this shit growing up. Okay, maybe that's the same case for you because obviously we all know the divorce rate. It's like fucking one in two, 50%. So bro, maybe that's you too. I feel for you. But anyway, with that said, stay tuned for more content like this. Like if you want, comment if you want, subscribe if you're new. If you made it this far, damn bro, subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.